Hello to everyone watching this footage, it's Leviathan here again, and to start things off I'm going to introduce myself for newcomers. I am born high functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like how the late Stanley did with his. To start things off for everyone here, I apologize for going past my two week time limit. And I'll make it up to you by introducing a story that you might recognize, but discover that it's a new incarnation of it that's native to my Leviathan universe. So if you guys bear with me, I'm going to read this story, which is a new incarnation of a legendary story that's been active for centuries, in the right and most exquisite aspect possible, for everyone in behalf for this podcast and the like. So if you guys bear with me, I'll introduce my, this storyline to you guys. Here it is. Alice, number one, The Black Queen. Created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames, August 2nd, 2015. To begin the story, we start traveling across New York City until we start observing a little girl waking up in her home at night from an unbearably weird nightmare. This story is particularly about her. Her name is Allison Hatterson II. She has bright green eyes, bright blonde hair, pretty dainty and innocent in appearance. She was having frequent dreams about random wars from a senseless fantasy land, and she for a time never figured out its true purpose. By adulthood, Allison had gotten a weird package from on for her 20th birthday from an anonymous relative. She opened it up and found it was a seemingly ancient mirror with an exotic variety of features. Why in Tartarus would anyone give me a mirror? Allison thought to herself. When she placed it on a wall in her bedroom at the left of her bed, she noticed a weird switch flipped it, and the mirror transformed into an unnatural portal. When she walked through it, she got infused with mysterious powers, along with gaining a feminine blue and white dress with a long skirt and black shoes. She then realized that she entered the same place as in the frequent dreams in her past. She then decided to explore the place until she got to a city populated by unusual creatures and talking animals. At the entrance, Allison found a banner high up that said, Welcome to Wonderopolis Wonderland. Wonderland? I've traveled to Wonderland? She thought to herself as she walked down the streets. Eventually, a group of armed, black-dressed soldiers that appeared two-dimensional took her to a large black castle at the northeast of this anomaly of a land. When she was shoved into the throne room, she found a woman with bright green eyes, long black hair, and wearing a red and black version of her dress sitting on a large throne facing her. She seemed oddly familiar. Hello there, sister. Allison then gasped in shock, never knowing that she had a sibling. How are you my sister? she asked her. I am Alexandra. I am your identical twin. For you to understand better, I shall tell you my backstory. And she continued. When we were both just two years old, I was transported to this land by the Red Queen during her final battles against our Alice, our ancestor. The one and only Alice. When she finally killed the Red Queen, my innocent mind was so shattered that all the bloodshed that it forever by all the bloodshed that it forever warped me to follow the Red Queen's footsteps. While growing up, I taught myself how to fight and to kill. Eventually, I murdered the one and only Alice, and I became the Black Queen of Wonderland. Since you are infused with true royal blood, I've got to keep you from dethroning, dethroning my royalty and have me demoted. Guards, 
her black card soldiers then came into the room. Take the prisoner to the insanity room. But before they got the chance, Alice, Alice grew to tower above them, smashed them through the walls, and got her sister in her grasp. Let go of me, Allison, Alexandra yelled as she got out a large single-edged axe with a spike on the tip. She then swung the axe and cut the back of Alice's hand. Yow! She yelled as her sister got out of her grasp and expanded to her height. She then knocked Allison out of the castle and launched her to Wonderopolis. Alice then got out her own axe and kept the Black Queen from slashing her. You've got your own Vorpium too. How about I show you how it's done? They then started dueling in the odd city. As they fought, the residents started cheering with one of them saying, It's the Royal Queen of Wonderland. She's going to save us. They then continued fighting until Alexandra finally noticed the presence of the mirror portal. A portal to another world? I must get there. She yelled as she knocked her opponent towards the mirror portal. As Alice went back to her normal size, she went back into her bedroom, and right before the Black Queen went through it, Alice had no choice but to smash it with her trusty Vorpium, forever disabling the enchanted portal. Back in her own world, Allison still had her powers and weapons, until she got encountered by Portal, who is an entity that could transport her back to Wonderland. After gaining back her access, Alice decided to protect the innocents from the Black Queen and other forms of chaos by making her own villain team, her own hero team, sorry. Nowadays, Allison is the founder and leader of a team whose members have anything to do with fairy tale characters and creatures, which are since known as the heroic fairy fighters. The end. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that story there. Sorry if I was a bit rusty with uh, admittance and such, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the footage. If you want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. And until next time, I'm Leviathan. Hope you guys have a fine November and such. And until next time, in transmission.